young person aged 14 to 25 using cannabis has been associated with four times the risk of psychosis later in life. This paper got some attention and then it sort of got swept away. And all of the data point to a very clear conclusion, which is, and I realize that saying this is going to upset some people out there because I know that there are a number of people who fought very hard for the legalization process, and I want to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge the many known positive effects of cannabis in adults with very occasional use, provided it is delivered safely and in the safe context and setting and with legality. That is entirely distinct from the issue of whether or not cannabis is safe for the developing brain and body. Again. I'm not demonizing anybody for using cannabis, but I want to make the point very simply and very directly. It is far and away a different circumstance for the brain for an individual to be 25 years or older and using cannabis than it is for a young person aged 14 to 25 to be using cannabis either by smoking or vaping or by edible or any other form on the brain and body. It's absolutely clear that the brain continues to develop at least until age 25 and that a huge number of systems related to mood regulation, so-called executive function, the ability to organize one's thoughts, plan and execute plans. It's abundantly clear that cannabis and THC in particular dramatically disrupt those processes. If this isn't clear enough just from my statements, I'd like to point to a particular paper. This is one of the more impactful papers in this area in recent years. This is a paper published in Lancet Psychiatry in 2022. Title is Association of Cannabis Potency with Mental Ill Health and Addiction, a Systematic Review. Lancet Psychiatry is one of the premier medical journals out there, and they evaluated a huge number of studies, and they looked at how early use of cannabis impacted later probability of development of psychosis and other psychiatric conditions. And the takeaways from this study are very clear. First of all, heavy cannabis use, meaning cannabis use more frequent than twice per week, has been associated with four times the risk of psychosis later in life, in particular schizophrenia and bipolar-like episodes. And then it's also the case that using cannabis, especially during adolescence and the teen years and up until age 25, create a four times greater risk of psychosis for those that have a predisposition to bipolar disorder and or schizophrenia. Now, I don't hear very much about this in the media. This paper got some attention and then it sort of uh, got swept away. I don't think that was an intentional sweeping way. There's just a lot of events in the world. And all of the data point to a very clear conclusion, which is the more potent the THC concentration, the higher probability of developing psychosis or a major depressive episode or a major anxiety disorder later in life. That should be of particular concern because we know, we are absolutely clear about the fact that with the advent of all these new strains of cannabis and with the engineering and availability of cannabis at much higher potency, meaning THC potency, the risk of psychosis is going up and up and is likely to continue going up unless something is done to reduce the frequency of cannabis use to zero, ideally, or to very low frequency, very low potency in adolescents and teens and people age 25 or younger. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this message because first of all, it's alarming. And second of all, as I mentioned earlier, the statistics tell us that the greatest number of people that are starting to use cannabis are in the age bracket of 16 to 24. But when you couple that with the fact that the most frequent adopters of cannabis use are in this age bracket of 16 to 24, plus the general perception out there because of the way that cannabis is discussed in the media and by sports figures and by celebrities and by, and by politicians, etc., that it's not as bad as alcohol and maybe not that bad and maybe even has health benefits, then you're essentially setting up a system where young people are far more likely to adopt and continue cannabis use without realizing these serious health consequences that await them later. 